In today's video, I wanna share with you five cryptocurrencies that I personally have my eye on for the month of February. All of these coins have some interesting catalysts that I believe make them worth paying attention to right now. My name's Lark. Every day I make videos talking about cryptocurrency investing. So if that's the kind of content you like, you appreciate hearing about, quick tap on the thumbs up button. Just let me know that you do like that kind of stuff would be super freaking awesome. By the way, every single week, my team and I produce Wealth Mastery. This is a cryptocurrency investor report designed to help keep you ahead of the curve in this fast moving market. Every single issue, you're getting market insights, a step-by-step -step DeFi tutorial, an altcoin report, TA, portfolio updates, airdrops, NFTs, and much, much more information than that. You can sign up for free using the link down below in the description. Go premium for less than $10 a week if you want to take the next step as well. So let's go ahead and get into this topic. So I would just like to preface this conversation with the reality that right now in the U.S., the White House is apparently preparing an executive order on cryptocurrencies. Could be a big deal. I just want you to be aware of that, to understand that. We still have the Fed and the inflation and all that stuff going on that's still causing some generally bearish vibes in the market. But this in particular is a bit of a wild card right now because they don't really know what it says or much about it, just that they're doing it. So if they come out with some positive, practical, common sense stuff, great for the cryptocurrency industry, potentially give us a lot of regulatory clarity or at least steps towards getting there. If it comes out with a bunch of onerous, draconian BS, then not good. And we could see that uh, dragging the crypto markets further down. So just you know, keep that in mind as you're investing during the next few weeks that we do have this macro event hanging over our heads. Now, Bitcoin, number one on the list and number one in my heart, Bitcoin, Bitcoin, man. Now, why am I talking about Bitcoin, the biggest cryptocurrency out there right now? Well, there's some interesting things that really have me thinking, yeah, February could be a month to keep an eye on Bitcoin. Now, Bitcoin doesn't do it very often, but from time to time, Bitcoin has these little like, whoa, Bitcoin is Bitcoining again kind of moments. Lots of interesting things going on. Balance on exchanges just hit a three-year low. That means people are still buying Bitcoin. In fact, they've been buying crazy amounts of Bitcoin at these prices, taking it off of exchanges, dumping it into their cold wallets, waiting for a million dollar Bitcoin to come. Also very, very interesting. This is percent balance of Bitcoin on exchanges. The behavior right now versus what we saw back in 2021, absolutely fascinating. So back in 2021, during the big crash, we saw massive inflows of Bitcoin coming to exchanges to be sold for a loss right here. Massive spike. That spike lasted for two and a half months until people finally capitulated at the last moment. And then of course the markets bounced back like crazy. Always happens. Except this time, something a bit interesting is happening. What can you see? Since the all-time highs were reached, we've actually had 43,000 Bitcoin taken out of exchanges. That is significant. That means that during this entire downtrend, people have been buying. They haven't been panic selling like happened back in 2021. We have smart money, whales, retail investors who believe in Bitcoin as a long-term asset, buying, buying, buying in this area. So that is very interesting for you to be aware of. Also this here, the Bitcoin adjusted dormancy flow as the guys were at Bitcoin Archive point out, Bitcoin has bounced hard off of these levels every single time. You can see here, 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 and here, and here. And then of course, we are in that area once again where we do have bounces historically, anyway, according to the uh, dormancy flow chart here for Bitcoin has seen major reversals coming in that area. Could go lower, just FYI, but this is generally the region where we start seeing big reversals happen. Is the cryptocurrency bottom in? The guys over at Cointelegraph are asking. Well, institutional crypto funds are also seeing a record second week of inflows. So that means that institutional money is buying Bitcoin right now because they're looking at it saying, well, Bitcoin's on a good sale right now, 50% off. It will go up into the hundreds of thousands of dollars. Bitcoin is worth a million dollars someday. They're looking at it. It's juicy. It's juicy under 40K. And they're nibbling. They are nibbling. Number two on our list today, Solana. So there's a few very important reasons why I think we should be watching Solana in the month of February. The first is that there's major network upgrades coming for Solana. 
This obviously is a very important thing because there has been some performance issues around Solana recently. Now they are bringing out upgrades the next four to five weeks that are going to solve supposedly those issues. So fingers crossed that those upgrades go ahead as planned and that they do actually solve the performance issues that Solana has been experiencing. Be a very welcome upgrade to see coming for Solana, but that's not the only reason to be keeping an eye on Solana right now. NFTs, we've got some big, big news. Now look, Solana is one of the biggest chains for NFTs outside of Ethereum. As we know, trying to do NFTs on Ethereum, it's painful because of the high gas fees. Whereas over on Solana, as an example, we've got great collections like the Geckos and the Dragons, for example, cool games like Aurori out there. And you can go and buy and sell these NFTs for fractions of a penny, which is a big, big game-changing experience for the average person compared to what they experience on Ethereum. Now look, of course, Binance, Smart Chain, Polygon, these guys are also doing NFTs. Solana's not the only one, but Solana is probably about to get OpenSea support. So that means that OpenSea is now going to start selling Solana NFTs. That is going to bring a massive amount of liquidity into the Solana NFT space because, of course, OpenSea is the biggest NFT marketplace. Getting Solana NFTs to be able to be listed over there on OpenSea, game-changing. Game-changing for the Solana NFT scene and, of course, potentially for the core Solana asset if we talk about price action. Lots of money flowing into the Solana ecosystem as well. Solana Wallet Phantom raises $109 million to rival MetaMask. Now, if you haven't used the Phantom Wallet, it's actually a great wallet. I really like using uh, the Phantom Wallet. It is my preferred wallet for using the Fant uh, the uh, Solana network. So it's like the Phantom Wallet's a great wallet to be using. But you can just see the venture capital interest in the Solana space, which is why Phantom has been able to raise all this money because there's a lot of money behind Solana in general. Also, we have Coinbase, which is now listing Solana-based tokens. So for the first time, they've listed Solana tokens. So they have uh, Orca and FIDA tokens. Now Orca is one of the uh, bigger decentralized exchanges on Solana. This is great news. This means that we're going to see a lot more liquidity potential coming into uh, the entire Solana ecosystem. Coinbase, of course, one of the world's biggest exchanges. Massive retail consumer base who's now going to be able to access all of these different tokens as they start getting listed on Coinbase. So that's a big potential catalyst right there. The third coin on our list to watch for the month of February is Breeder DAO. Now this one's not actually trading yet. It will be soon. Their token sale will be soon. So if you want to stay up to date about when their token sale is coming out, what is going on with this token, go over and follow them on Twitter so you can stay up to date with what they're doing and when that sale is going to be happening. I am very excited about this one. That's why I invested uh, in it. Now, what are they doing? Well, Breeder DAO is, as they say, breeding life into the metaverse, one NFT at a time. So essentially, what we are seeing Breeder DAO doing, bringing in asset creation. So as they say, we're helping to optimize the NFT production process to make it faster so that guilds can scale faster. Now, guilds are an important part of the play to earn game ecosystem because those are the people bringing in the players, but their players need access to the in-game assets, which is exactly what BreederDAO is doing, helping provide access to those high demand in-game access. So they wanna make sure that getting access to those NFTs to be able to play the games is not a limiting factor to bringing players into these ecosystems. They're also gonna bring in their on-chain expertise, so looking at a variety of things of how they can create value for these games and the ecosystems linked to empower the economies as well. But again, helping the individuals, helping the guilds actually build their games, build their ecosystems and make everything work in a nice fluid way. So it's, it's, it's an infrastructure play for the play to earn gaming space. Now, we've talked about guilds before here on the channel and how guilds are an important part of the play-to-earn uh, infrastructure scene. But we also have uh, great projects like this now coming out that are a very important part moving forward of the play-to-earn infrastructure, actually bringing in this extra value add on top of 
of the play to earn ecosystem. So we're gonna see lots of different infrastructure pieces being built out. And I like I like the graphic behind it here because it's really just, it explains what BreederDAO is doing. They are a factory helping create the assets for these games. So right now they've supplied 100,000 plus NFTs so far. They have 50 plus partner guilds and eight partner games at the moment, which is very, very cool. So you can see game assets in production here. Axie Infinity, Cyphers, Cyballs, Krabatas, stuff like this. So they're working with a whole bunch of uh, cool games across the crypto ecosystem. And as well, they are backed by some of the biggest names in the crypto industry. Anderson Horowitz, Delphi Digital, Hashed, Yield Guild, which is a massive, massive cryptocurrency guild and a lot of other uh, great names on here as well. So I'm very bullish on play to earn gaming. I'm very bullish on NFTs. I'm very bullish on the metaverse. I'm bullish on the connection of guilds into the play to earn in infrastructure ecosystem. And therefore I am bullish on breeder DAO because they're connecting right into that and helping facilitate the play to earn gaming economy. So definitely want to keep an eye on again, like I said, go and follow them over on Twitter where you can learn more about them and their upcoming sale. The fourth coin on our list today is Avalanche. Avalanche, another one of those coins is down more than 50% from its all time high, like so much of the cryptocurrency market right now. But just because the price has come down significantly does not mean that the network is dead or dying. No, it's just simply a, a symptom of the market right now. In fact, Avalanche is looking very, very nice at a network level currently. So this is a Q4 report from Masari. So Avalanche finished Q4 averaging 475,000 transactions per day, almost 40% of Ethereum's 1.25 million average. That's actually been going up in the month of January, by the way. So Avalanche is continuing to see adoption because people like cheap fees and Avalanche is that. Avalanche is cheap to use. It's a great user experience. They have lots of great applications. We'll more about that in a second, but lots of great applications building on top of the Avalanche networks. So this is why we're seeing this continual rise of people using Avalanche, users coming into Avalanche. And yeah, I know we're a little bit down from the peak when we had almost a million transactions per day back here a few weeks ago, but we're still maintaining very high users transactions per day on the avalanche network so the network metrics are very good we also saw a massive amount of total value locked coming into the avalanche network with lots of money coming in chasing around avalanche DeFi. so that's a very important thing as well and obviously avalanche also has a burning mechanism so all transaction fees on avalanche are burned removing from uh, the circulating supply AVAX tokens. So, so far over 700,000 Avalanche tokens have been burned. So we have users coming in. We have the burn juice, which is always a good thing to see for a cryptocurrency like this. And of course, um, we have lots of great applications building on top of Avalanche as well, which leads me on to the fifth coin I would like to talk with you about. That is Trader Joe. Now, this is something we mentioned here on the channel a couple of times before. But there's actually been some interesting developments that I think make Trader Joe worth watching in the month of February. First, they're doing a massive overhaul of their tokenomics, which is very, very exciting. So this is going to, at least in the intention of it, is to make Joe farming less of a farm and dump economy, which is you know pretty tough on the price overall because farmers get the tokens and then they're incentivized to dump them. But we have new features coming to Joe staking, which is going to make it a lot less likely that that's going to happen on such a level. So first is that they're going to have Rocket Joe, which is launching, you know, tomorrow, basically. And this is going to be basically a, a launch pool, uh, initial decentralized exchange listing service, something like that. You can think of it. So you need R Joe in order to be able to participate in that. So you need to lock up your Joe tokens. We also have S Joe, which is going to be a platform revenue share for Joe. So basically you're going to start earning stable coins for staking your Joe tokens, which is pretty gosh darn cool if you ask me. Nothing like having a nice little bit of tokens there that just make you more and more 
cash all the time via stable coins. We also have V Joe, which will give you Joe farm boosts. So if you're farming in Trader Joe already, you hold V Joe, you get farming boosts, which gets you more Joe coins, which means you can earn more platform revenue, share, get more access to rocket pool launches, etc., etc. So lots of great things going on with the tokenomics of Trader Joe. And then we have the price down significantly from the all-time highs. Like, of course, so much of the cryptocurrency market, altcoins did get hit much harder than the big majors. Currently down 75% at the time of recording this video. But what I find most interesting, what I find most interesting here, Trader Joe is doing $210 million in 24-hour trading volume. However, the market cap is about the same. It's almost exactly the same market cap. Now, why is that noteworthy? Because almost no other major decentralized exchanges have that kind of one-to-one -one spread between the price of the asset, the total market cap of the asset, and the daily trading volume. Uniswap, for example, is worth around five times as much as their 24-hour trading volume. PancakeSwap is around four times as much as their 24-hour trading volume. It's got like a $1.6 billion market cap. Uniswap's got like a five and a half, six billion dollar market cap. That means what I see Trader Joe being potentially quite undervalued at its current status, with the big tokenomic upgrade coming being the major exchange for uh, the Avalanche network, which is also seeing uh, user growth and more people coming into it all the time. So like I said, something to watch, something to watch. Obviously don't go out and just ape into any old random coin just because Lark talked about it on channel. You still have to go do your own research, think for yourself, and of course dive in on any of the stuff that if I did mention it here, you think, wow, that sounds interesting. Go research it some more. Figure out if it is actually something that you would like to invest in or not. It's what I like and have invested in personally. But what you may or may not do with your money, totally different question. Anyway, just my two Satoshis for the day. Your question, is there a coin that was not on my list that definitely should have been on this list? Let me know down below in the comment section. Thanks so much for watching today's video and peace out till next time.